Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where finally, I think it is time for this particular space program to start looking its way into the future. Uh, and by into the future, I mean outside the Kerbin system, because whilst it is quite nice to have this nice little proving ground for us to go around and do things, um, like a piece of space junk is out doing better than any Kerbals are doing in my program, and that that will not fly especially whilst we have like over oh well no zero zeros we don't like that whilst we have a, over a million bucks or whatever you want to call them k bucks is what i've been referring to them as in the bank we'll deal with the science later so i think well the first thing i need to do is upgrade mission control because oh my god no maneuver nodes why why have i not been doing this so bam straight up done the other thing i want to know is what do we get unlimited contracts so the only thing we get now oh, well uh the other thing the last thing I really want to do is upgrade this launch pad because uh, who, ne who needs limits, hey? Psh, limits. Um, and there we go. So, what are we going to do? Well, we still have 184 days to wait for Juno, and that, that is a, a long time. And we, but we also have a Kerbal, a brave Kerbal, a hero of the Kerbal race, still out on the moon. Uh, I'd like to bring him back, like to bring him back, excuse the uh, little slips there, uh, but... I would like to do it with some style, because, you know, that that's what I do. So I would like to bring him back to Kerbin via Minmus. This one, in fact. Now, the Alone Ranger uh, is the, the vehicle that he is set up in with on the moon at the moment. Should be capable of all this here. I mean, I know he can do the uh, the temperature scans and stuff like that. Uh, and it should be capable of getting back to Minmus and back, hopefully. Now, what we are going to need is some fuel and some uh, parachutes for the Alone Ranger, because it's not... When I made it, I didn't really think about how he was going to be getting home. I thought I'd send out some sort of uh, transfer vehicle or something. Uh, as it turns out, actually, I want to bring it back. So I'm going to make a fuel tanker with some parachutes on it to go and, um, well, go and deliver some fuel and some parachutes and maybe get to Minmus. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go design that craft. No, back. Uno memento. Memento later, I have built this vessel, the Valdizian. It's actually just a rebuild of the Exxon Valdez, as you could imagine with the name. Um, it's just we put more solid boosters on there to get more of the fuel to the moon. Uh, and there is a hidden special feature that we will talk about when we get to the moon. But first, look at this launch pad. The glories of all that we have done here. Um, I'm, I'm quite quite proud of this. Uh, one thing I have noticed is that this this tower over here has actually got a light on it, and it keeps you see you can see the light difference here. And that that confused me for ages. I thought it was the sun coming up or something like that. But anyway, we are not going to do another moon flight because we've watched the moon flight a lot um yeah i'm just gonna go and i will see you in orbit around the moon oh my god maneuver nodes i've won the game that's it i've just won it, there is nothing i cannot do with these uh, there's a little bit of a small control issue here. For some reason, uh, you'll notice that my pitch and your are absolutely maxed out. I cannot do anything about that. So I'm going to have to exit the game and come back. Just let, let you guys know that the, these things happen. Like, that. oh, yeah, no, craziness. Okay, we're just going to quickly blitz our way through this landing. You'll see that I put my periaps very close to uh, my landing site here. Unfortunately, I uh, allowed too much for the spin of the moon. I was expecting the uh, the Alone Ranger to be a lot further around than this. Uh, so, we're going to make our landing here. Now, the one thing I'm trying to do is not land in a crater. Because landing in a crater, well, that's all sorts of trouble. Uh, and you'll see here that you know I had to ease off on the throttle just to make sure I didn't land in a crater. But unfortunately, this meant I was coming in super hot. I mean, look how fast this is. Is. Thankfully, I managed to nose up enough to just get over the lip of this crater, and guess what? Yeah, that's right. I landed in the middle of this crater. Um, yeah, the one thing I tried not to do. But th that's all right. We, we can deal with that. And um, yeah, I crashed it. Well, it, well, it wasn't an explosive crash, but yeah, that wasn't great. That wasn't great at all. So the next job up is to bring the Alone Ranger over to the uh, Valdizian because, well, the Valdizian isn't going to make it to the Alone Ranger. And that's, that's, that's all right. That's exactly what the Alone Ranger is built for, making it over the surface of the moon using as little fuel as possible, which is just as well, really, because if you look down to the bottom left there next to my engine indicator, I don't actually have all that much fuel to be doing this maneuver with. But there are issues. One of them is don't go ahead and quick save whilst you've just kind of taken off a little bit over the surface of the moon and uh, coming in for a landing again because 
Well, look at all these explosions. I found myself in a very, very awkward situation here where I had to do all sorts of things to try and make this work. Um, eventually, I did manage to actually try and save myself here. But, oh, I, at this point, I was feeling greatest despair. I really thought uh, this whole mission was over here because I quick saved it in completely the wrong place. Of course, it wasn't just about getting from A to B. The journey was interesting as well. And I found little things like this, this massive hole in the, the, the northern surface of the moon here. Um, I decided to quick save it at the top and go and have a look because this was such a massive hole. And I have uh, plans for some sandbox stuff to do a little bit later on, um, going down the, the one side of a big hill and up the other and maybe do some like skateboard or and or mountain bike tricks. I, I'm not sure yet. I just wanted to show you guys uh, the, some of the fun things I get up to whilst I'm on my way that don't really have much to do with the mission. And to me, this is what these wheeled vehicles are all about, even with the explosions. Of course, this particular stint of this mission was all about getting the Alone Ranger to the Valdizian so we could, like, fuel up. And we get to talk about our super secret like, extra hidden feature here. Uh, that, of course, being that there's no fuel pump on here. Uh, I completely forgot to do that at the time and uh, I'm a little bit embarrassed about it to be honest uh, so we're gonna have to send up uh, a small probe with one on top of it um, yeah th there's not really much more to say about that so small probe away I made it as small as possible because literally all we're moving is a fuel pump over um, I used a tiny little sub assembly to get up here tiny fuel tank with some ant engines on it to uh, ease my descent down as it turns out i could have made this actually a little bit smaller the uh big fuel tank i say a big fuel tank this, this tiny fuel tank underneath here was actually supposed to be a transfer stage from curb into the mun that never happened i ended up like my sub assembly actually ended up having so much fuel to take it all the way uh and you can see the little uh probe up on top which was meant to be the actual thing so what i'm going to do is uh grab all the fuel out of this as there was so much that i just really didn't need to use uh before taking the fuel pump and uh, taking it over to our fuel tanker because well that's what this particular part of this mission is all about of course once we are done with the probe of shame we had to come across to the valdizian take all the fuel out of that and then take all the parachutes off of there so that we had some sort of return to kerbal mechanism because a uh, kerbin mechanism because that that's what this particular bit is about as well and now for the ultra interesting part of this particular mission trying to get from the moon to minmus so what i'm doing now is trying to line it up so that the side of the moon that i am on is facing the most inclined i.e the most northerly point of minmus's orbit because i'm going to be putting myself into an inclined orbit if i take off from the north pole like this as i am doing right now in the thing and if i am close enough to that highest point on minmus orbit that means that my inclination is as matched as it can possibly be. That at least was the theory whilst taking off, and I am pleased to say it actually kind of worked quite well. I mean, I wasn't anywhere near as close to the inclination as I hoped to be, but, you know, what are you going to do? I'm all the way up at the North Pole of the Moon, and I want to go to somewhere that's basically on an equatorial inclination. I mean, all the planets, anything in the system isn't actually that far off the equatorial plane. So, um, yeah, I've just got to kind of deal with this as I am. Uh, so I'm just at the moment making sure that my circular orbit isn't going to smash me into any mountains, i.e. making sure that both my periaps and my apple apps, or apple apps and periaps, I suppose, would be the better way to say that round, above five kilometers uh, i put myself at somewhere like an eight kilometer orbit which is quite good and now we've got a long time to wait so i went off and did all sorts of um interplanetary transfer calculations and stuff like that used mainly the calculators available through the the glories of the uh, reddit and google and such forth and now i'm waiting for minmus to be 90 degrees ahead of the moon bam there we go that's brilliant so next i have an ejection burn to make and i know that that needs to start when i'm just a few degrees off of the moon sort of retrograde marker if you will like like there where i'm putting the the maneuver node now the problem with this is that is the point where i am furthest away from the equator which uh uh, is a little bit annoying it means i'm shooting out of the, the moon's soi at quite a high point but because i'm making a is it a hoffman transfer i am going all the way to the other side of the kerbin system so i have a, um, enough time to go up and back down as indicated by this little trajectory here uh, i did overshoot a little bit but with a little bit of tweaks, we, we managed to get things exactly where we wanted with quite a, quite a nice encounter. And now we get to say bye-bye, moon, and watch the Kerbin rise over the top of the moon. 
beautiful stuff. I love this game for that stuff. And then we end up with this weird thing here, which really confused me. But thankfully, a few seconds later, it sorted itself out. I have no idea why these weird sort of trajectories pop up every now and then. I'm sure a few of you that have been playing the game for some time now have seen these weird things when you're changing from one sphere of influence to another. And there seems to be some weird boundary zone in between where it's... I know, it's sending you on all sorts of weird places that actually have nothing to do with what you're doing. Yeah, confusion. Right, so we are now into the Minmon Sphere of Influence, and I'm trying to figure out how I can get my ship over the top of that marker over there. And it takes me a little while, but I realise that it's actually not going to happen. With, the, with my periaps being that far already around the planet, uh, there's no way that I can get myself down. I, I believe that one I had to be below six kilometers, and yeah, it just wasn't going to happen. So I set up a maneuver node to be able to uh, change my orbit into such a way to put myself close enough to there's a group of three where I have to go do surface scans. So that is where I'm going to land. And after a little bit of tweaking, this is where we end up perfectly aligned well i say perfectly there were, were a few more tweaks to do on the way uh i set my active navigation markers and start thinking about coming in for a landing obviously a vessel such as this is slightly different for landing than it would be for a rocket obviously the thrust being behind us but our wheels being underneath means we've got to do some weird stuff as we're landing but that that's all right i've got a lot of practice with this um class of ship now I don't, i'm not sure what what class we should call these i mean we've got the alone the alone ranger and tonto I'm, I'm thinking maybe the silver class as they are like the the the, the transports you know hi-ho silver and all that i don't know anywho we're coming in for a bit of a landing here and i'm thinking how far off the floor am i so i go inside to have a look at the radar altimeter and then it tells me that i'm already at the marker and i'm like oh no i'm supposed to be on the surface here so we fire up our engines to try and like just stop our forward velocity as much as we can uh and now we start the eternal plummet down towards minmus obviously it's you know quite a low gravity environment so it does take a little bit of time um but once we're once we're landed and i start mucking around with all the lights and stuff everything feels good and we've got to go find these markers which thankfully they're all actually quite close together at least these three are anyway these three surface ones so i roll around on the surface um in this one i learned the value of the z key because obviously when i'm uh, giving myself a bit of a thrust forwards i just want to go full throttle stop so i press z then x and yeah no it's amazingly good fun um Okay, so after a little time, I find myself back in the uh, back in the, the the navigation area, and once again, I find that my brakes are just not powerful enough to stop me. So I need to use my under rockets to uh, tip back and uh, slow myself down. And continuing to use my under rockets, we decide to climb up this hill to go find the next marker, which thankfully is just at the top of the hill uh, and I suddenly realized that I don't actually have to stop to be doing these sciences which uh, is, is quite good I could just be doing it on the roll like this which is amazing like that saves me all sorts of issues so whilst I'm rolling around and getting these last few bits of science uh, I want to talk to you about what I want to take to Juna as this is like the next big thing on my on my list of things to do now definitely one of them is a uh, a glider if you will with a Kerbal attachment like winch port on the front so we could attach it to a rover and then use that rover to launch the glider and go for uh, beautiful flights around Juna. Uh, beyond that I'm not sure what I, what I want to do obviously we've got some science and probably going to have some contracts to fill out but what do you guys think what do you reckon I should take along with me uh, I want to do some fun stuff so I'm probably going to take a rover with like landing gear wheels like this because they can go a hell of a lot faster than the actual rover wheels and yeah, yeah, just let me know what you think. So we are taking off now um, to try and join up these two navigation points with our orbit. Uh, I, I, I'd noticed that they were really close together, sort of on a band around Minmus, if you were. If you drew a line from where I was to the furthest navigation marker, the middle one wasn't too far away. So I reckon we can probably get them both in the same flight here. And indeed, this is the one thing I, I set up ready to do. So with bam, we get the first navigation marker and then make a small trimming maneuver off to the, uh, is that east? Yeah, that looks east. Let's, let's go with east. Uh, to make sure that we are going to hit the next one. Whilst at the same time, trying to give some sort of thought to our return trajectory uh also how much fuel we've got left because that was a big concern of mine during this entire mission uh so i had to get my guy out to push the the ship round because unfortunately i'd managed to put this into a, an orbital trajectory whilst having my solar panels pointed directly away from where the sun was and and that was no good all right so what we're doing now is trying to figure out how to get home um I, i'm 
in a, a equatorial orbit with not an equatorial sorry i'm in a polar orbit with my orbit facing Kerbin, which is not how you want to go home you want to go home by going left from Kerbin, as if you're like looking at the looking at the planet uh so i take a bit of time mucking around seeing what like the best tra uh, best exit trajectory is that i could possibly do and it turns out it, i don't really have anything great to do from here so i just kind of exit in the most graceful manner i possibly could and we have to wait until we're all the way around to just behind where we were in our orbit so that's almost an entire orbit before we make this particular burn uh the Kerbal alarm clock obviously keeping us bang on track to make sure we don't go zooming past it because obviously when i'm going around a whole orbit i'm not being particularly patient about it but yes anyway once we found ourselves with a nice trajectory that puts us on a, an orbit just around Kerbin I make my uh, make my maneuver node to bring us back down into the atmosphere around Kerbin and then drag it around uh, the the predicted orbit to find the point with the, the least amount of time to wait which means that's the point that I'm going to be leaving the minimum sphere of influence once that's done I just perform this maneuver um, give myself a little tweak so I make sure I'm coming back down on the uh, sort of equatorial plane and then we time warp our way down to uh, down to Kerbin watching the moon zoom past is always a beauty at this point and I just saw the desert back there which leads me to think that I'm pretty close to Kerbin uh, to the Kerbin Space Center and then having a look I find out that wait those are the mountains we know and just over there is the actual Space Center and oh my god I am so close completely like non-intended I'm not, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and claim here this is what I was going to do but yeah look look how close we are literally just over there uh, that is the small chain of islands o over there that is to the north of the Space Center amazing right so as always for landings getting inside and having a look at my radar altimeter because it is so much more accurate than the one at the top there and I was well impressed with how uh, balanced those those parachutes were, especially as I had to place them all by hand. But anyway, looking through all these parts and stuff getting back is great, but straight up to level two. This is the first time Rich McCurman has gone out and come back. Anyway, I will say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure. I will see you next time where we're going to do a lot of Duna planning, I think. We're going to try and make some ships and get everything together and possibly in orbit for our great assignment. Bye!